The U.S. has always been a mobile nation with people often moving around for better jobs, better climate. But a new trend has become increasingly strong in recent years. People are leaving in droves from blue cities. Based on the U.S. Census Bureau figures, the top five states seeing a tidal wave of departures are New York, California, Illinois, New Jersey, Michigan. And they're leaving for states like Florida, Arizona and Texas according to those bases there. Uh, joining us now to discuss what this means for these cities and really for the real estate market, too, Rogers Healy, CEO of Rogers Healy and Associate Real Estate. Our panelists are back as well to weigh in. Rogers, good to see you, and uh, thanks so much. It's easy for many just to yeah. blame the coronavirus for the trend, uh, but this trend has started before the pandemic with many decrying liberal policies, higher taxes, increase in crime. Rogers, what are you seeing? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a great time to be in real estate in Dallas, Texas. I'll, I'll start with that. And this is, like you said, <laughs> this is not something that the pandemic caused, but the pandemic definitely put some more fuel on the fire. So we've seen an influx of people moving to places like Dallas, like Charleston, like Nashville, Phoenix, et cetera. But yeah, the, the trend started a few years ago. It's just been escalated immensely the past seven or eight months. What have you seen, uh, being a real estate agent there, being able to sell property and such, what are you seeing? Have you seen the, the, the major shift in, in 2020 when the pandemic started? Was it the end of the year? Tell me about that. No, so normally, so I've done real estate for 20 years, and historically our busiest time of the year, quote unquote busiest time of the year is the spring. And that's really gonna be March, really through early June, which leads into early summer. But we kind of had a spring market from May all the way until December. So, you know, it, when this all broke out, nobody really knew what was going to happen. And I think the month of March for anybody, whether you're in real estate or selling widgets, unless you were selling hand sanitizer, toilet paper, or masks, it was just a slow month. And then when stuff started to happen, it started to evolve and people wanted to move, you know, out of their apartment in New York City. Like I read that 300,000 people literally left New York City last year alone. That stuff started to happen. We had to be ahead of the game, especially in places like Dallas, Austin, Nashville, et cetera, like we were saying, where we were not prepared for the amount of work we were going to have. And when that happened, it created the new norm. And places like Dallas have benefited from people leaving, you know, places like California. Yeah, you, you read a lot about that um, with, with yeah. several major companies. Um, Victoria, I'll bring you in on this, because according to data, 6.5 percent more Americans look to move to red and swing counties than to blue counties in the entire second quarter of 2020. Your thoughts? But of course, Sean, but I have I have a question, though, for Rogers, and that is, is there any way to evaluate what kind of voter is going from those states to the red states? Uh, do we have any kind of data on that? I'll, I'll tell you from my experience, it's people like, I, I, you know, Texas is now considered a purple state, right? I think it's because we have so many people from California that historically wouldn't have moved to Texas because of us being you know, not the same belief system as California, you know, and, and I lived in California back in the day and I had a Texas license plate. And people just judge me like, oh, my God, you're from Texas. Right now they're, they're coming in the gr in groves. And I think that when you have multiple Fortune 50, more, multiple Fortune 500 companies moving here, they're not going to really have an option. And I think what's going to happen is the historic way of thinking is going to be trumped by the number one new rule of real estate. And that's affordability. So, you know, when that happens, we don't really have a metric to go and, and measure it. But I can just tell you from personal experience from our company here, we've never seen such a shortage of inventory across the board. Normally it's seasonal. Normally it's entry level housing, but it's with high end luxury property as well. And it's just been it, it's been crazy. Joe, when you think about this, at what point are these major cities seeing such a loss? I personally think in New York City, when do they start turning around saying, hey, OK, we, we can't live like this, we are going to have to make some changes because it's not survivable. That's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. They're never going to change because you don't have two party systems in those cities or in those states. California is a one party state. New Jersey is virtually a one party state. New York is a one. Party state. So what you have is you have a kind of political system, which even though it sees itself being eaten alive by the of people, it won't do anything about it because I have a little bit of audio issues with, with you guys. I apologize to the viewers for that. Rogers, really quickly before we go, does this trend continue the in 2021? Is, Rogers? 
I think it's going to continue in 2021 and beyond. I, I think real estate, especially residential, has been redefined. And like I said, it's always was historically about location. Now it's about affordability. Now it's about having you know space for your family. So I think that we're going to see these cities, these cities that were kind of a blip on the radar, not necessarily flyover states, but places like Dallas, Texas. You know, no one would have visited here, you know, maybe previously, but now we are a, a powerhouse. So I think this is something that's here to stay. I think we have at least a five-year run of real estate being as strong as it has been the last seven or eight months. Go Cowboys. All right. Uh, Rogers Healy, Go thanks Cowboys. so much. Yeah. <laughs> appreciate it. I got to get that in there. Rogers, good to see you, yeah. buddy. Uh, uh, panelists, please stick around. More to cover after this. Still to come, pressure from Pelosi. The House Speaker calling on Vice President Mike Pence to invoke the 25th Amendment. Now, that appears to have failed. Her backup plan of impeachment is ready to go. Our panelists react right after this. 